So, of course, we're all familiar with the graph and the issues. I do want to somehow to connect because we saw that as a clinical company. I always said that COVID was a promo, not only showing why we need to develop, need to develop, develop, to develop, to develop but it's also but a it's promo also indicating going to be the situation in our hospital just in two decades that people are aging and will start to go much more intensively to the healthcare system. It doesn't work. And I'm saying it straightforward. We need to change from the base entirely the healthcare system and the way that we are treating human beings moving from chronic hospitalizations and endless of treatments to development of agents that will heal and regenerate our bodies. I was hearing the, the last two presentations, uh, showing uh, colleagues, uh, Professor Zao and Kulun from talking about uh, cells. And I can say that most of the data that have been presented was repeated also in our labs and clinical setting, and I will show you that. So Pluri is a company that active in regenerative medicine and cell therapy. We are publicly traded on NASDAQ and Tel Aviv Stock Exchange um, and developed for years cell-based technologies and mainly how to expand cells very efficiently. We operate globally, headquartered here, but a lot of collaborations all over the world uh, that we are developing. It's not, yet, it's not a young company. We have a massive pipeline of indications from phase one to phase three that we have developed together with the NIH, DOD, uh, under several horizons that I will show you uh, in variety of uh, in variety of program. So the advantage that we work with cells, we do work with placenta cells, but we know how to do it in a preclinical settings and how to take it all the way to phase three, including marketing chain and actually making this product a viable solution uh, uh, for humanity. Today we are treating diseases. Uh, my end goal and where we're heading, and I had a lot of conversation with Ilya over the years, I think that healthy human beings deserve cells and deserve regeneration and deserve to heal and maintain our quality of life and well-being. So we started and decided to work with a very unique organ, a placenta. I am 100% biased about placentas, but this is a remarkable organ. Uh, coming from the unique situation in nature, pregnancy, when you have two immune systems, the mother and the baby, that in a remarkable way coexist without rejection of the ones, one against the other. And we all know that a mother can be a surrogate mother. She can carry someone else's child and still the body will not reject the baby. And this is our starting raw of material, the placenta itself that allow us to expand the cells very significantly and to use it in a logenaic manner. So no match is needed between the donor and the patient. We're taking young, healthy, potent cells from placenta expand them quite intensively and inject them uh, to, uh, to variety of different uh, to patients in variety of different uh, indications. Our claim to fame is around the manufacturing. We invested literally hundreds of millions of dollars to develop one of the most innovative and robust cell expansion platform in the world that allow us to expand cells very efficiently. This is so efficient system that from a single placenta, we can treat more than 20,000 patients. So we take the cells, expand them massively. The key thing is that we are controlling the environment, the expansion environment. We are uh, using the uh, cell expansion platform that allow us to expand the cells very efficiently. The rationale of the system is to mimic our own human body. We are controlling temperature, pH, glucose consumption, basically every parameter that is required. And we are trying to mimic the creation of our own human body. So next time that you're looking at the body and complain that we are too far, too lazy, you're holding a very nice, well-balanced well and coordinated system. So I have a lot of respect to, uh, to human being. And this is what we are trying to mimic. We're talking about placenta. We're talking about regenerative medicine. And we're talking about manufacturing and production. Why this is relevant for aging. What we've seen, and we have treated hundreds of patients all over the world, that once the cells, and today we have different cell types, are injected to the patient's own body, they start to communicate with it, with the, with the patient's body, as cells do. Now that you are sitting here, there is a massive discussion in your body, cell-to-cell -cell interaction, biological or chemical signaling of the cells. The advantage of the placenta cells, that they can read these signals, and they are responding into these signals. 
I always like to say that placenta cells, or they are native speakers. They speak the language of the body. So for me, it just makes sense to treat cells because we are built from cells with cells. And obviously placenta being the youngest available source uh, for treatment makes it a very powerful, a very powerful organ. Today we can identify very clearly the mechanism of action, what the cells secrete in response to what signals from the body. And we found over the years uh, that there is a really very interesting correlation between the disease that we treat and aging. So spend the last two days talking about what is aging. And I was asking in the last few years, many people, what is aging? Is the skeletal muscle age? I mean, the waste is muscle wasting, our new neural situation, the age of the immune system, the level of inflammation that we have in our own body, the ischemic condition of the arteries in, in the heart or, or in the leg, what is aging? And probably the best answer is everything, all of the above. So what I'd like to present today is a, several examples that in my opinion show the opportunity of using cells and placenta cells particularly in order to meet some of the disease that are aging associated, age associated. And I would like to show you some example, preclinical as well as clinical. And as I mentioned, we have treated hundreds of patients showing that it works. And my concept that if we are able to show to each of every, every parameter that cells actually function and create efficacy and assist the body recovery, maybe this is a good agent to treat us human beings with cells in order to preserve our well-being before it transforms into a disease. And these are a few examples that I'd like to show you. Muscle wasting, muscle wasting. Yeah, it's a shame. We are losing a lot of mass and mass over the years about three to 5% every decade since we are very young, 30. And we know how it translates to actually, to actually our functionality. And you can, we can see that, we can measure that, and that's easy, and we all understand muscle wasting. Using our cells, this is a phase two, a phase one, two settings that we did with the Charité of Berlin. We were able to show that injection of placenta cells that we are using, increased muscle volume is measured by MRI, increased muscle force, as we were able to measure, and that's all statistically significant against placebo. It was a small study that we have conducted, and following that, we moved to a phase three study, 240 patients. We were fortunate enough to get, funded, to get the support of the horizon, of the horizon in 2020. And we actually were able to repeat on a larger cohort, the ability of using placenta cells in order to increase Muscle, uh, muscle force, which translate to functional endpoints like uh, increased more walking distance, etc. We published a very interesting papers about it, and you can find it on our website. And this is something that we see a clear evidence twice in controlled studies that placenta cells can contribute to uh, increase, maintain a uh, muscle force. These patients were patients after a hip fracture. So as you know, when we're lying down and not moving, we are suffering from significant, intense muscle wasting. Let me show you another, another example, which kind of correlate, ischemia. We know that aging, it's the, the, we are seeing one of the most dominant things, the ischemia of, from heart uh, vessels to leg vessels and entire, and we just had an excellent presentation about the micro, uh, uh, micro uh, vessels that are so essential for our aging. So we know today that the cells, and we can identify, they secrete a lot of factors that are very relevant for angiogenesis while doing it in a controlled way. So just not, not just pouring angiogenesis factor, they are responding to the environment. And if they're gonna feel these chemical conditions, they're gonna secrete factors that are really valid, like VGF, FGF, that are relevant for angiogenesis. We are able to, to see that, of course, in preclinical setting, um, and even measuring and seeing a very nice effect in the blood flow of, of, pay, of uh, in this case, animals that receive the cells versus placebo. We're seeing a nice increase in angiogenesis, but we are also able to repeat it in a phase one, two, and three setting, showing the ability of using cells um, to reduce amputation for patients which are in very late stage ischemic situation, suffering for bad wounds to the leg. And we are seeing that we are decreasing quite nicely 
the amputation free survival. So how many of these patients will be amputated or, or die? And that gives us a nice setting of understanding that cells can be a nice contributor uh, to support angiogenesis that we are losing over the years. The uh, micro, the micro uh, uh, vessels that are so essential, essential for, for us. Professor Zhao was discussing in details the information, and we can we repeat this, we can see the same data. Of course, the increased level of inflammation contribute to our aging process. We know in preclinical setting, in vitro, in vivo, and but we also know in clinical settings, like in this case, for one of our phase two studies, that once we inject the cells, they're able to modulate the immune system. When it's overactivated, like in this case, after a massive muscle trauma and a surgery, the cells are able to balance the overactivation of the immune system. This program was also funded by the Horizon. Uh, and Professor Zao mentioned this COVID treatment. I'm not showing the example here, but we have treated over 100 late stage ARBS programs, uh, patients following the paper that Professor Zao published. And we were able to show a nice increase, like 40% in survival for this very late stage uh, uh, COVID patients. So cells and placenta cells, we know that they can support muscle regeneration, they support, a, a, a support a preventing of ischemia, as well as controlling overactivation of the immune system. We're gonna start soon this program uh, that we are doing in collaboration in Germany uh, for knee osteoarthritis, involve many of the parameters that I just mentioned and one of the most painful aging phenomena that a lot of people are suffering. Uh, we call it the Porter Project. It will be interesting. We're just starting to, to enroll patients uh, and we are doing it with our European partners. Uh, and I have an expectation to see the impact of the cells uh, also on uh, knee uh, osteoarthritis. But it's not, we don't see only a separate activity on the ischemic muscle and inflammation. I don't want to give you more examples which are very relevant for us because aging is a system or disease, if we can call it like many systems. One of the system is our immune system. And I do, we did, did, uh, we did uh, do a study for hematopoietic, seeing that if we are able to support the hematopoietic capability uh, of human beings. It is important. Some of the most smart physicians that I met told me you are at the age of your immune system. And it's probably right. The same thing as we are in the age of our skeletal muscle or our neural activity. Uh, we are developing for quite a few years together with the US NIH and the DOD, using one of our placenta cells to treat uh, radiation as a countermeasurement after exposure to very high level of nuclear radiation, with the goal to modify the outcome of uh, acute radiation syndrome, hematopoietic acute radiation syndrome which is a massive destruction of the hematopoietic cells. And we, are, we know that it's extremely relevant. So we did a clinical, a preclinical studies here showing that using these placenta cells can increase significantly survival after exposure to high level of radi radiation, ionized radiation. So there is a massive oxidative stress in the, in the patient body, reminding us what's happening in aging, but not such an acute condition. And we're able to show in many studies, they actually repeated the study 30 times because they couldn't see and believe the data uh, that the ability of the cells to modulate that and to increase uh, uh, the blood counts, which leads to a better immunological functionality. Recently, we published also the phase one data with the same agent uh, treating patients after bone marrow transplantation with a massive damage to the hematopoietic system. And also here, we were able to repeat the same data that we showed in animals. The placenta cells have the ability uh, to support the hematopoiesis and su support the free blood lines, the red, the white, and the platelet, which namely translate to a better immunological functionality, which we all know is essential uh, and suffer from reduction as we age. There are many more examples that, but taking uh, understanding that we are limited in time, I cannot share all the data which are also relevant, uh, something that is very interesting for us is to evaluate the neurological uh, capability, the, the ability of the cells to reverse or to support neurological damages with very interesting paper that was published from this house in Barilan, uh, showing the ability to support neurogenesis, uh, which is a very uh, interesting. Today, we live in a very advanced technological world. 
in Pluri, we are having some of the most advanced technologies, including gene editing or whatever is needed to give unique capabilities to the cells. And I think that seeing the advantages, and these are part of our collaborators that we, we haven't been there, been here without uh, their support from academia to, uh, to academia to governments to um, uh, commercial companies. And I do want to remind you, and since we are in Israel, we are cell therapies, in my opinion, is was the most the, was one of the most promising platforms uh, to support and even reverse aging. We are holding a many years promise, and we know that our biological potential actually goes to the first man Adam, 930 years. So don't aim too low, guys. According to the Bible, first man lived to 930 years, and we still hold a prophecy from the Bible that promised that at a certain point, we're gonna to live to the age of the trees. So if we're gonna do a good work, and you are gonna be active, maybe we're gonna get it that day. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, please, questions. Uh, it's working, right? Okay. Um, very interesting uh, lecture. Uh, I do have a question about you. Give a lot of uh, examples of how these cells uh, do a lot of good things. Do you know what, what exactly are the biological mechanisms by which they do it? Well, that's probably one of the most complicated questions that we spent only about 10 years and $200 million to answer the question, really. Cells, not like proteins, not at anything else, they, they are, do not operate on a single a mechanism. It's a very complicate, complicated mechanism of action with a cascade of events. So we spend a lot of time to understand how it works. We have a very good understanding, understanding, I cannot say that it's 100% yet, but it's very close to that, of knowing how the cells are impacting on different indications or different diseases. And we are today, even the next generation products, we are kind of training them to better suit the condition that we're going to find in specific indications. So, yeah, and that's one of the slides that I showed there, like a very complex and a, a mechanism of action. It is complicated because this is the way that the body works when we're talking with cells. Thank you. Yes, please, Miriam. You on the microphone? Thank you. And uh, just to have an idea, how many cells do you inject? How long do they stay in the body of the patient? And what happens in a pregnant woman? Is she in a position that she will heal better, will age slower because of the placenta that she is bearing? So I will first answer the second question. Uh, pregnancy, I told you, it's not less than a miracle, really. I mean, the engineer did a quite an amazing work designing the placenta. Uh, we do know that pregnant women, and it's, quite interesting to see that with uh, for women with autoimmune disorders during pregnancy it alters and change the modification of the disease so there is a the, the mother itself needs to adjust herself immunologically to make it more tolerant to the baby so the combination of the placenta tolerance of the of the mother allow to carry the, the pregnancy we are injecting different dosing of cells for different indications uh, this is the reason that we are doing those selection studies. We found that in a more acute conditions, uh, we can lead to healing relatively with lower amount of cells and with single treatments. For more chronic indications, like the critical limb ischemia, ischemic leg, that's a full disease of the entire body, we need more cells. We are going even to 300 million cells twice, going for cell multiple injection of, uh, of, 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 uh, of cells. So the answer, is different between the different indications. We need to adjust it. In the body? Today, our assumption, based on the preclinical models that we can uh, extrapolate, we believe that they stay about six to eight weeks, that the number go down over time. This is the reason that from the more chronic indication, we need to read those again to maintain and actually to support the continuous healing of the patients. So. One thing I didn't mention, we are working, as I mentioned, globally with quite a lot of collaborators, and I see that there are many people here. We are very interesting, uh, interested in developing a program around it, either in Europe, US, uh, like a joint collaborations. And I think that 
uh, either through Horizon or any other programs, we can build a very nice group to support it. Thank you. Thank you.